to go downstairs and tap into a lot of materials on different subjects that will help you in your spiritual life. Well, you know, some of you like to read, some of you like to listen to CDs or DVDs. So that's the reason that we do is to enhance your education spiritually. All right? Uh, you know, spiritual ignorance is very, very dangerous. The Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge, Hosea 4, 6. It says, my people have gone into captivity because of lack of knowledge. If you are in bondage, and the reason the devil's got you in bondage is because you lack revelation of the Word of God in that area. And so if you don't invest the time, you know, and, and effort and, and money to educate yourself, you're going to stay a dummy. Tell the person next to you, don't be a dummy. Amen. So, and these books have been used in Bible schools in Latin America here in the, in the States, uh, and prisons and, and churches. This is entitled Prayer, Key to Moving God. This is a book that will teach you how to pray. It's a good book. Uh, prosperity, God's Will for You. This is a complete teaching on the subject of prosperity. I've been told by some ministers, these are not my words, some ministers, this is the best book they've ever read. And it has all the scriptures on, uh, in there. Uh, basic Bible Truth, every believer should know. This co covers multitudes of messages. We've had people healed. Uh, reading this book, filled with the Holy Ghost, just on their own, because they, faith comes by hearing, and they made the faith connection, and they received from God. Uh, understanding spiritual authority in the church, this has to do with church government. God's grace for victorious living, this is how to increase the favor of God in your life. And the doctrine of water baptism, which every, per every person should be water baptized. Somebody said, well, I was baptized when I was an infant. That doesn't count. You got born again, you need to get immersed. You got to go under, amen? And there's something that God will do in your life. Then I have, uh, you know, CDs and DVDs. I just mentioned a few. How the kingdom of God operates. God's word will produce. This is three CDs on developing confidence and faith in the word of God. Um, the end time wealth transfer. We're living in the end times. There, there is going to be an end time wealth transfer. God's going to take the money that people have in this world and give it to the believers. But then not just to any believer. He's going to give it to the believers and know what to do with money. And so that's a complete... And then God's grace for reigning in life. And then I have left over some uh, videos and DVDs that I'm, uh, and CDs, rather, videos and, and, C and uh, tape, uh, tapes, cassette tapes, that are half price. So if you still have a tape player or VCR, you can pick up some real good stuff downstairs uh, at half price. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, and, and we do praise you tonight, uh, actually this morning, for this uh, privilege that we have to gather together in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that you're going to minister to not only the people that are here present, but those that are watching by shows or TV, that you're going to bring them a word in season, Lord God, that they're going to be encouraged, they're going to be instructed, in some case maybe corrected, but it all be good. And uh, I thank you for touching every life and meeting every need. And we'll give Jesus all praise, glory, and honor. Everybody said? Tell two, pe tell two people, you're going to be blessed today. Amen. I want to talk to you tonight, uh, tonight, uh, I want to talk to you today about the signs that point to Jesus' soon return. And uh, <clears throat> I want you to turn with me to John, the 14th chapter, and we'll begin there. When Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible says, and I don't have time to read all the scriptures, but the Bible says that he appeared for a period of 40 days, and uh, he appeared to... Uh, his apostles, he appeared to uh, uh, James, and he appeared to over 500 witnesses, which I believe happened at Mount Olivet just before he was taken up on that last day. Uh, that's found in 1 Corinthians 15. The apostle Paul talks about that. And he said it, he appeared at one time to over 500, and I believe that those were the ones that saw him ascend up into heaven where he is today is sitting at the right hand of God. Uh, ironically, out of those 500, only 120 waited in Jerusalem for the promise. And, and that's, that's, you know, if, if you're in ministry, you know, you've been in ministry now for a long time now, you know that, that that's pretty correct. You know, you have a core of people that are faithful to the things of God, and then you have the other, kind, the other group of people that just come to church whenever. They're not really committed to Jesus, amen? Hey, listen, if you're not committed to the Word, you're not committed to Jesus. Please do not tell me how much you love Jesus and you rob God of his tithes and his offerings. Hello? You're ugly, you mistreat people. Don't tell me you love Jesus because you're a liar. Amen? Jesus said, if you love me, John 14, 21 through 27, he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. He that doesn't love me doesn't keep my commandments. 
So that's, that's the proof right there. If you love God, you keep his word. You want to show God how much you love him? Keep his word. That's the greatest way that you can show God that you can love him. It's not how many songs you sing, although that's important. It's how much word are you keeping? And in order to keep the word, you've got to put your flesh under. Hello? You know, for example, the Bible says you've got to walk in love and bless your enemies. I mean, sometimes you feel like slapping your enemy. But, you know, you've got to crucify the flesh. That's the flesh want to slap somebody. Want to curse them out, tell them off. You've got to put that flesh under and do what the word says. Amen? It's called living a crucified life. And that's how you prove to God that you love him. It's when you're going through all hell. You don't even understand what's going on. You're going through all hell, but you stay faithful to God. You don't quit coming to church. You don't quit doing the word. You feel terrible. There are times I come to preach the gospel. I, I mean, I was going through hell. Boy, I tell you, I was going through more stuff. But I just put a smile on my face, preached the gospel. Nobody knew what I was going on. See, that, that's where you show yourself approved unto God. Anybody can talk a good talk. But do you walk the walk when the heat's on? Don't shout me down because I'm preaching so good. I haven't even got to my message yet. Did you find John 14? If you didn't find it you're not, yet, you're not going to find it today, so i give you plenty of time. So Jesus appeared to his disciples, but prior to that, prior to his resurrection from the dead, he said to the, uh, some things to the disciples in uh, chapter 14, verse 1 through 3. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. The reason their hearts were troubled because he was, he was telling them that he was going to be crucified, that he was going to go away. And he said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go prepare a place for you. That's what Jesus is doing right now in heaven. One of the things he's doing is preparing a place for you. He's preparing your mansion. Now, he's not doing himself. You know, he's got angels to do the, that kind of stuff. But he's directing. He's the master crafter. And when you get to heaven, you're going to have a mansion that's going to blow, blow your mind. Man, I tell you, anything that you love. You know, God knows you better than you know yourself. And the Bible says he's going to keep you turned on for eternity. You ever think about that? You will never have a boring day in heaven. Never. And we're talking about eternity. Eternity never ends. That's enough to get you shouting, man. I, some, some of you need, I don't need, some of you need a Holy Ghost transfusion or something. God, I think of that you have power to raise the dead. Glory. Tell that person next to you, put a smile on your face, you know, let, let your face know you got the joy of the Lord inside of your heart. Dear Lord. I understand what God said to Jeremiah. Don't be moved by their faces. <clears throat> Some of you came in here looking like you gargled with lemon juice, you got baptized in pickle juice, and took a bath last night in vinegar. Hello. It ain't that bad. Whatever you're going through, this too shall pass. Amen. All right, <clears throat> now, he said, um, verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may also be also. That is referring to the catching away of the church. That's what we're waiting on right now, is for the Lord to come back and to raise up the physical dead, the physical dead, people that have died in Christ. I have relatives of mine that I've led to the Lord. And they're in heaven today, many of them. I have people that I pastored. For example, Pastor Barry's mother, who I love dearly. I think about her, singing about her last week, how faithful. What a faithful woman. She loved, loved God, loved her pastor, loved her church. I remember she was a dating guy one time. He made the mistake of talking bad about me. That was the end of that relationship. Don't mess with a pastor, man. Well, I tell you, it feels good to have people like that, you know, in your corner. Because being in ministry is not, is not, is not fun. That's sometimes a lonely life. The same people that tell you how much they love you on Sunday will split your church on Wednesday. Talk about your sister. Talk about your kids. Talk about your wife. Talk about your dog. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. It's true. But uh, he's talking about the, the catching away or oh, the rapture. The word rapture doesn't appear in the, in the Bible. It actually says catching away. And let's talk about the catching away for a minute. Go to 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, because a lot of people don't know anything about the, they're catching away, yet it's such an important doctrine because, you see, when people die in the Lord, God doesn't want you to be like the world. I've done many funerals. You know, I, I've been to funerals before I was saved, and I've done funerals, you know, after. 
being in the ministry, I've done many funerals. And sometimes you go to funerals, man, people get whacked out, particularly if they don't know Jesus. I mean, they want to jump in the casket with the person. Hello? I mean, they get, they get whacked. They get really whacked out because they have no hope. I'm telling you, when, when people die in Christ, they got promoted. You know? I mean, listen to me. If you have a brother or a sister, and they came to you, they said, man, you know what? I just inherited for free a great mansion. And I'm going to live in a place where I'm never going to get sick, where there's no wars, there's no lack. Everything is free. Everything is paid for. Would you be sad for that person? No, unless you don't know what the Word of God says. So when people go to heaven, they got promoted. Now, I understand that there is, a, there is some a little bit of sorrow because, you know, you missed the person. But if your mind is renewed, you know that you're going to see them again. Amen? See, my grandmother raised me, and I led her to the Lord when she was in her 80s. I think she was in the 80s because she didn't, she didn't know how to read and write. I taught her how to read and write and write her name. And I led her to the Lord. She was big-time Catholic. Man, used to fight me all the time about, you know, I wanted to throw them crucifixes. Used to go to the Santeria. You know, had the little bottles with the, with the little bones and the little water and the little, some of you know what I'm talking about, right? You had a grandmother like that? <clears throat> well, one day she, she accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We cleaned house. And then God filled her with the Holy Ghost. Started speaking in tongues. Amen. And went to a Pentecostal church for many years and went home to be with the Lord. I look forward to seeing her one day. She's not going to be old. You know, everybody in heaven is like in their 20s and 25. That's right. When you go to heaven, thank God I want to get my black hair back. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, you, you know, I mean, you go on my Facebook page, you see some of my younger pictures. You know, when I was in my 30s, remember those? Somebody posted them on there the other day. I said, man, I was looking good. I was like 150 pounds, black hair. But, you know, things happen with age. But thank God it's all coming back, Nooney. Glory. Your blonde hair is coming back, brother. <clears throat> you didn't know you didn't know you had blonde hair one time. Hmm? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to tell you a secret, man, but uh, but they do say blondes have more fun. Don't they, Nooney? <laughs> so <laughs> So anyway, uh, let's read First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verse 13. If you didn't find it, look, somebody that found it, they said, can I read your Bible with you? So in verse 13, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. The Bible doesn't even call them dead. It calls them falling asleep. Lest you sorrow as others have no hope. See, God doesn't want you to sorrow over people that go to heaven. Because people that have no hope think they're never going to see their loved one again. We are going to see our loved ones again. And, and the thing is that it's going to happen very soon because the coming of the Lord is right around the corner. It's very soon. And I'm going to show you in the scriptures. For if we, we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who are asleep in Jesus. Well, in order to be born again, you have to believe that God, that Jesus died and he rose from the dead. And if he did that for them, he's going to do it for the, those that have died in Christ. See, their spirits are up in heaven right now. Their bodies are in the grave or wherever they're, they're, they're buried. You know, some people are buried in sea. When that trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ will rise first, and then we which are alive will be transformed in the twinkling of an eye. You're going to get a glorified body. You're going to see me going up, and I'm, I'm going to slender down to 150 pounds. My black hair is going to come back. Amen. I'm going to look like my 20. Oh, it's going to happen in the twinkling of an eye, just like you. So it says in verse um, 15, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. In other words, we're not going up to heaven first. The dead in Christ will be raised first. Their physical bodies will be raised up out of the grave. Their spirit and soul that are in heaven will join their body. That will happen in twinkling of an eye. As quickly as you can blink, that's how fast it will happen. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So when, you, when somebody dies in Christ 
and they're all, and, and, and you know, their relatives are all blown away. Here's a good scripture that you can use to comfort them. Give them the word. I've been to funerals where people are so whacked out. I mean, they just whacked out over somebody that I go in there, start preaching the gospel. All of a sudden, they get all calm and stuff. They start smiling. They start rejoicing until some unbelieving relative comes in with their pity, with their pity, sympathy. Oh, I'm so sorry. And they get them all whacked out again. See, the Bible says he'll keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. That's in Isaiah, I think, around 25 or so, 27. He'll keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the. If you want to have peace, you've got to keep your mind fixed on what God says. Amen? I mean, the biggest problem you've got right now is with your mind and your physical body. You learn how to control both of those, you'll be all right. Look at 1 Corinthians 15. This also has to do with the coming of the Lord. Paul, or the Holy Spirit through Paul, gives us a little further revelation on this. 1 Corinthians 15, <clears throat> starting with verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. So this, this body of flesh and blood, see, when, you, when, you have, when, you, when you go to heaven, you're not going to have a body of flesh and blood. Your body in heaven will not have blood. It will have a glorified body. What is it made of? I don't know. But all I know, you'll be able to do what Jesus did, walk through walls. Hello? You'll be able to travel psh, up and down. You know, all the stuff you see angels do right now, you'll be able to do it. Behold, I will tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corrupt, corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? Or Hades, where is your victory? Well, does, death and Hades don't have victory over us because we're in Christ. We're not going to hell. Amen. And uh, if you believe in Jesus, you don't die. You just go from here to heaven. You just transfer out, like, move, like moving from your house or your apartment to another house. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 58. Therefore, for this reason, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. You, you need to learn how to be steadfast. And the only way to be steadfast is you've got you to build your house upon the rock. That's the revelation of Jesus Christ to the word, according to Matthew 7, 21 through 27. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You should be abounding in the work of the Lord. You should be looking to do more for God. Amen? Avail yourself to be. Why? Because everything you do for God, you're going to be rewarded one day in heaven. I, I, I'm living for heaven. Amen? I'm, I'm showing my treasure up there. Why? Because this world is eventually going to be destroyed. Now, it's not going to happen anytime soon because Jesus has to reign for a thousand years on this earth. So nobody, don't let anybody freak you out. There's going to be some nuclear war, you know, and, and the world's going to be destroyed, some asteroids going to come. No, it's not. Not for a thousand years. Are you following me? And, and the, the millennium reign of Jesus Christ hasn't started yet. Because we're, we're waiting right now for the catching away of the church. Then there's going to be a tribulation period of seven years. At the end of the seven years, we return with Jesus Christ and deliver Israel from their enemies. And God will pour out his spirit upon all Israel, and all of Israel will be saved on that day. That's the last day of the tribulation period. Then the millennium reign, the thousand-year reign, begins. At the end of that thousand-year reign, God will destroy the heavens and the earth, and he will create a new heavens and a new earth in which we will live in for eternity. Are you following me? All right. <clears throat> so, so we should be abounding in the work of the Lord. Because everything that you do for God, everything. You know, right now, those of you that support this church with your tithes, amen, you, you, support, you support what's going on here with your prayers. Pastor Barry is over there in Gabon. And every person that gets ministered to there is written in your account. That's a biblical, script, a biblical principle. That the person that stays behind 
I think it's 1 Samuel the 30th, 31st chapter, that the person that stays behind and the person that goes to, to battle, to war, get the same reward. Hello. See, you know, I was in the military. I was with the 82nd Airborne Division. I was infantry. But, you know, we had support. We had artillery support. We had air support. We're all in the same military, fighting, you know, fighting together, but we had different functions. So, you know, he's in the uh, front lines right now, and, and Pastor Wilder said that you need to keep him in prayer, and that's very important. You know, I've had the privilege of ministering in 29 different countries, some of them over 10 times, and one of the reasons that I was successful, with the exception of one time I had a lot of trouble, one time, found out the church wasn't praying the way they should. And I went through a lot of help that one trip. Because everything, everything happens through prayer. And so, you know, just because you pray it on to you, you should be praying every day, lifting him up, believing God for his protection, believing God to anoint him, believing God to protect him from sickness and disease, from bad food. Amen. Praying for his family. You know, he leaves. You know, she's got double responsibility. She's got to look out after the church. She's got to look after her children. She doesn't have a husband to help her. Hello? So, you know, you need to pray for her. Kids miss daddy, particularly the little one. I pray for her. So, you know, you, you have to constantly, the Bible says we're to pray without ceasing. And you're to pray both in the spirit, that's in other tongues. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking tongues, you need to seek that. I have a little book downstairs, basic Bible. Matter of fact, I, I, I gave Pastor Barry a whole case here. So when, when, when you come for the first time, we give you a free one. And, and, uh, and, and you should study those chapters and seek after the baptism of the Holy Spirit because you need that in your life. And uh, we need to pray both ways, going to 1 Corinthians 14, 15. I will pray with the Spirit. It actually puts praying in the Spirit first. And I will pr pray with the understanding. Because a lot of times we don't know what to pray for. I, I don't know everything he needs prayer for. Hello. But the Holy Spirit does. Are you following me? See, you don't know. You know, you, you know people are out there. And, and uh, I was in, in the Philippines uh, about four or five years ago uh, where they tell you, the State Department tells you not to go, General Santos City. That's where all the terrorists are. Well, two weeks later, the, they set a bomb off, uh, I think a couple of blocks away from where I was staying. But, you know, you don't know to pray for that unless the Holy Spirit leads you. And that's why it's important to pray in the Spirit and be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. And God can have you pray uh, over, over a situation. All right, now, go over to Matthew, the 24th chapter, and that, that was my introduction. And so let's go over to uh, signs that point to Jesus' soon return, because, you know, we, we hear that all the time. Well, Jesus coming soon, Jesus coming soon. Yeah, but I want to show you in the Word of God that he is coming soon. And, uh, and that there are certain signs that Jesus said would be happening in the generation that's alive and that generation, when that passed away, until all things be fulfilled. And we are that generation. So starting with Matthew uh, 24, verse 1, it says this. Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to show him the buildings of the temple. Jesus said to them, do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another, that shall not be thrown down. This is a gorgeous temple. Gorgeous temple that was built. But he said, this temple is going to be destroyed. Now, he was actually prophesying something that took place in 70 AD. This prophecy about the destruction of the temple happened in 70 AD when Titus and the legion of Roman soldiers came into Jerusalem and leveled it, and over a million people were killed. At that time, the Jews were dispersed throughout the whole world. And the reason that it happened, according to, uh, I think it's uh, Luke 19, around 41 through 44, is because they did not recognize the day of their visitation. God brought judgment upon Israel. Uh, it was, it, it was the, the original plan of God was this, that Israel, who were the, the, the covenant people, the ones that preserved the word of God, it was his will that they would recognize his son as the Messiah, accept him, and then in turn they would be used as the evangelists to proclaim the gospel. But Israel, 
as a whole, now there was exceptions. We know that the disciples were Jewish, the apostles. But as a nation, they rejected him. He, he, he wept over Jerusalem. He said, you didn't recognize the day of your visitation, what would bring you peace. And as a result, God judged them and allowed Titus and the Legion of Roman soldiers to level that, that, that temple, level Jerusalem, and the Jews were carried away all over the world, and they were scattered until God brought them back in, in, in our time. And he began to do that in the 1920s. And in May 14, 1948, Israel became a nation. Are you following me? <clears throat> so then in verse 3, he says, Now he, as he said on Mount Olive, the, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be? So, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Or the king says it's the end of the world. So the disciples ask him three questions. He says, tell us when will these things be? When, when will the, the temple be destroyed? What will be the sign of you coming back for us? And the third question is, when will be the sign of the end of the world? <clears throat> now, in order to get the answer to all these questions, you would have to read Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Because some writers answer one or two of the questions. They don't answer all of them. And then when you read them, it's not in chronological order. See, the answer is not the first question, this is what happens. The second question is sometimes you have to know what he's talking about, right? Because that's the way they wrote it. That's the way that they remembered it. Now, Jesus may have given it to them in chronological order, but the way they wrote it was not in chronological order. So you have to know the scriptures, know what he's talking about. So when he, when he, when he begins to talk now uh, in verse 4, and he begins to give them an answer, he totally ignores, Matthew totally ignores the first question. What are the signs that point to the, t to the temple being destroyed? When is that going to happen? He ignores that. Luke deals with that, but he doesn't. He begins to talk to them about the signs that point to his return. And so in verse uh, 4, he says this. Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceive you, for many will come in my name saying, I am Christ, and will deceive many. Christ simply means the anointed one. We have a lot of people claiming that they're anointed. We were just talking about... Uh, Angel and I about the guy in Cuba, uh, not the guy in Cuba, the guy in, in Miami. What's the guy's name again? Has this something? He, you know, he claims that he's Jesus, yet he smokes cigars from Havana. Uh, you know, drinks Bacardi, and and uh, and it's amazing, amazing that you, uh, I've seen interviews of professional people, you know, lawyers and doctors that follow him and give him all his wealth, all their wealth, and the guy's a false Christ, a false Messiah. Well, we've had a lot of those, you know. We had that, 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 that nut over on Waco, Texas. It was actually Waco, but, you know, they were a little whacked out. And my, my, I forget what the guy's name is again. Uh, what was it? David Koresh. Yeah, some of you young people don't remember that. But, you know, he had a following. They thought he was the Messiah. And, and many of them died in, in the fire there. And, uh, then you've had Sun Young Moon. Huh? Um, so there's been a lot of them. And you had uh, the guy that took a whole bunch of people over there to uh, South America, to uh, Central America, rather, to uh, Guyana. Uh, uh, his name escapes me also right now. David uh, J Jones. What is it? Jim Jones. That's right. Jim Jones. He was another one. People followed him thinking he was the Messiah. And he at one time, he was, he was right. He's actually a Pentecostal preacher. But he got off. That's why you don't follow men. You follow Jesus. You stay with the word. If, if a, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. As long as I'm following Christ or your pastor's following Christ, we should follow. You should follow. We're, we're the leaders. You know, follow us. But man, judge with the word that what we're doing and saying is correct. I used to tell my people all the time when I pastored. Uh, I'm sure that Angel remembers that. I, I said, I, I know you love me. I know you trust me. I know you know I'm a man of God. But I want you to examine what I preach. I want you to judge. You're not going to offend me. The reason I did that because I didn't want them to trust man so much that they follow man blindly. 
because we're all human. I'm seeing men right now. I don't want to mention names because if I mention some names, you would know who they are. And I, I don't want, I'm not here to criticize people, particularly these men, because uh, I, I know that they're good men. Uh, and some of them I know them personally. And some of them have major ministries. But right now, they are so off doctrinally and have embraced such things that are, that are outright heresy. And they, they've gotten off. And I pray for them, but it's alarming to know that somebody that has a lot of tenure, even more than I do, more time in the ministry, big ministry, and they can get off. Huh? That's why you got to stay humble. <laughs> you got to stay humble, man. <laughs> Don't ever think you arrived. I've had God speak to me through little kids. I've had God speak to me through bumper stickers. I've had God speak to me through women. Hello? And at one, point, and at one point in my life, many, many years ago, I'm talking about many, many years ago, early 80s, I got born again in 81, I had a problem with machismo. didn't even know it. You all know what that is, don't you? You Spanish guys know what that is? Oh, don't look at me in that tone of voice. You know what I'm talking about. I'm the man of the house, bless God, you know. I don't take, I don't, I don't let a woman talk to me, blah, 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 blah. Some of you black brothers know what I'm talking about, too. You know, you got the same little. God had to deliver me from that stuff, man. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you're married, you are the head of the wife, and your wife should honor you and respect you that way. But it doesn't mean you're always right, Bubba. Hello? Because I'm going to tell you something. There are certain things that, there are certain areas that women are more astute and sharper on. You know? You know, we guys, we guys are a bunch of dummies when it comes to women. Look at Samson. That hit prime example. Look at Samson. You know, if he had a good wife next time, she, she would have rebuked him. Say, stay away from that woman. Huh? Say, good. That woman, women will pick up on other women like that, man. I mean, we, we're just so caught up in, in our ego that some, some woman comes telling you how handsome you are, how good looking you are, and how, you know, you, you, you remind me of, uh, you know, some movie star and all, the, all that stuff. And you just eat it right up, and before you know it, you're, you're being pulled by the, by the nose, you know? You know what I'm talking about. Hello? Why do you think people fall into adultery a lot of times? Because it's just stupid. Hmm? Particularly if you have a good wife. Now, I can understand if you have a lousy wife that doesn't treat you good, that you can be put in a situation where you can fall into that. doesn't justify it. I don't understand a guy that has a good woman at home and looking for something else. You are a dummy with a capital D. Matter of fact, go a little further. You're stupid with a capital S. S doesn't stand for Superman with you. It stands for stupid. Amen. Why would you want something else when you have something good at home? Anyway, that's not my subject. Maybe somebody needed to hear that. Maybe not about nobody here. Maybe somebody in Sozo. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you something. Adultery. Adult, God hates adultery, man. I'm telling you, you will be judged for adultery. Big time. And the thing about it, you commit adultery, even when God forgives you, the stigma stays with you. I see, I've seen it in ministry many times. I've seen ministers fall into adultery. They get right with God. Sometimes they even marry the person they, 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 uh, they cheated with. And God restores them, but that stigma never leaves them. That's Bible. I don't have time to show you, but it's in the, book, in the Word of God, in the book of uh, Proverbs. That stigma never leaves you. So if you're thinking about it, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. You never know what God's telling people. See, that's the prophet's ministry. The prophet will get down there where you live, honey. He come, not, he come right down your street knock on your door. Huh? That's why the prophet never stays with the subject. He, he takes what I call rabbit trails. This is a rabbit trail. And somebody's mail being read. Amen? May not be somebody here, or it could be. Might be somebody watching Sozo. But I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is reading somebody's mail, and he's telling you, don't do it. And if you've done it, repent real fast, and ask God for forgiveness and mercy, and get back in fellowship with God. Because I'm going to tell you something, you are, you are going down the road to destruction. God is my witness. That's the word of the Lord for you. So if you're wise, if you fear God, you, you'll heed it and, and act on it. 
<clears throat> All right. So, verse 6, verse 5 again. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And he said, <clears throat> he said in verse 12 and 13, it said, evil men and seducers will grow worse and worse. In other words, the world is going to get darker. People are going to be more rotten. We're seeing that today. I mean, some of us have been around a little bit. Amen? I'm, I, I'm 60 years young. Amen? Uh, you know, Pastor Barry's father is 96. He's seen a whole lot more changes than I have. And the world is a different world today than when we were kids. When, we were ki when I was a teenager in the 60s, there was something called the Blue Laws. They didn't, they didn't do merchandise on Sunday. All the stores were closed. All the stores. And, and I wasn't born again back then, but I used to feel like a peace, man, because they were honoring God, and God was putting his blessing. They did away with those blue laws. You didn't feel that peace anymore. Same thing with Christmas. We know that Jesus wasn't born December th uh, 25th. Some people, some scholars say he was born around April or whatever. Well, who knows? But in any event, he, he, he was being honored on the 25th. And it used to be Merry Christmas. Even if you weren't a Christian, Merry Christmas. Now it's happy holidays, Xmas. And it's not about Jesus, it's about money. And you know what? I haven't felt a Christmas spirit in a long time. Why? The blessing of the Lord has been removed. The presence of God. Even when I didn't know the Lord, I used to feel a difference in the atmosphere on Sundays back then. And then, you know, you know there used to be atrocities when I was a teenager. Once in a blue moon, you'd read about somebody doing something crazy. But it, ha it didn't happen. It wasn't every day. Hello? We didn't have school shootings. Yet we used to sing the Pledge of Allegiance, put our hand over our hearts. Uh, I mean, Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance. We used to sing God Bless America. We used to honor God. People were allowed to pray in school. Now, thanks to the CLU, CC or whatever it is, uh, CLU, ACLU, all these bleeding hard liberals, they've done away with all that. So now, you know, if, if somebody wants to pray in school, it's a crime. And they go after them. <clears throat> Wait till they start going after ministers because they won't marry homosexuals. Hello? That's coming down the pike. Now, you're going to have to make up your mind whether you're going to compromise the Word of God or you're going to do what the Word of God says. And you know what? It may cost you. You may have to go. Uh, we'll find out, you know, who's really committed to Jesus when they start locking you up for preaching the gospel. We see how, 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 how committed you are to the Lord. Some people are committed to Jesus when everything is honky-dory. Everything is nice. Uh, is this too strong for you? I don't care anyway, but you know, just figure I'd ask. <laughs> now, I, I'm not going to take the time. If you read Luke 17, he said it will also be like the days of Lot. What was prevalent about the days of Lot? Homosexuality? I would have never thought, in all the years I've lived in this country, that we would have elected officials, that we would have judges in, 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 in America, one nation under God, sanctify the marriage between a man and a man. Every time I see that on TV, I feel I've thrown up two guys, two mustaches kissing. Oh, dear Lord. Amen. That's not normal. The Bible says that. It's an abomination, Romans 1. And then you have women looking like, like they want to be a man. You know, they get their crew cut, and they, you know, walking with their woman. That's, that's gross, man. That's abnormal. That's actually a demon that gets inside of people, makes them do stuff like that. They open the door to the devil. And the reason, be, because they wouldn't acknowledge God. Read Romans 1. I don't have time to get into it. That's not normal. Amen. I mean, if you have an issue in that area, come see me. We'll cast the devil out of you. We'll get you straight. Get that spirit out of you. Amen. And be what God's called you to be. If you're a man, be a man. Bless God. If you're a woman, be a woman. I mean, go doll yourself, baby. Matter of fact, if you want to get a husband, you better get yourself all prettied up and stuff, you know. Comb your hair, brush your teeth, go to the beauty parlor. <laughs> Amen. Some, 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 some women want a man, they don't even fix themselves up. No man looking for an ugly woman. 
Amen. How many of you guys believe in God for a wife in this place? I, I, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you praying along these lines, Anthony? Are you going, Lord, it's me, Anthony. I know you have three, three levels of ugly. You have ugly, you have ugly, ugly, and bojugly. And I'm asking you for the most bojugly and woman you have, Lord. Because I want her ugly to glorify your name. Is that the way you pray? No. Thank you. That man's got Saturday. Huh? George is, probably, George is probably praying, Lord, send me some sanctified, holy ghost, good-looking, foxy woman. Glory to God. Send me a hottie. Send me a 10. Let her be filled with the Holy Ghost. Ain't that right? That's, that's, you know, that's the way I would pray. I'm not looking for no ugly woman. Wake up to Frankenstein in the morning. Wow, Jesus. God's not giving me a spirit of fear, you know. <clears throat> Look at verse um, 40. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, and the other one left. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour the Lord is coming. He said, I want, you need to be spiritually alert. Spiritually alert. How, how are you, you going to stay spiritually alert? you got to stay in the Word and prayer. you got to be in church. Hello? Why do you come to church? Because it's Sunday. No, you come to church to learn. See, see, the reason God wants ministers to be able to be supported financially by people, so they de dedicate themselves totally to the Word of God. They can learn the Word of God, and you don't have that kind of time because you have a secular job. So now you enable them to have that time where their, their, their attention is not divided. They get revelation from heaven, and then when we gather together, they teach you the Word of God. Hello? Hello? They do the studying for you. They do the preparation for you, and then they come and serve it to you on a silver platter. That's the way it's supposed to work. And you should be learning about God, and, and God's made it easy. Today, with the technology that we have, there's absolutely no reason why you can. But you've got to stay spiritually alert. Now, let me go to Luke uh, 21. I don't know what time I started, but Luke 21. <clears throat> Luke 21, let me begin to, to wrap, it, wrap it down. Like I said, I need about four days to preach this, maybe five. Luke 21. And he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury, and he saw a certain poor widow putting in two mites. And he said, truly I say to you that this poor woman has put in more than all. For all these things out of their abundance, have, all of these out of their abundance have put in offerings for God, but she out of the poverty in all her livelihood that, that she had. Then as some, that as some spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and donations, he said, these things which you see that the days will come and which, you do not, which not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. I, I said that was fulfilled in 70 A.D., destruction of the temple. So then they asked, saying, teacher, when will these signs be? And what sign will be there when these things are to, to take place? Then he said, take heed that you do not be deceived, for many will come in my name. So again, he begins to tell them the signs that will take place before he, that Jesus comes back. He doesn't talk to them about the signs that will take place before the temple is destroyed. He does it later on in Luke 21, though. And he said, take heed that you do not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am here, and the time is drawn near. Therefore, do not go after them. But when you hear wars and commotions, the word commotions in the Greek means instability, disorder, confusion, common or tumult, uh, a commotion or tumult, rather. Are we seeing that today? Are we seeing instability? Are we seeing disorder? Are we seeing confusion? I've never seen so many leaders in our country so confused. I mean, they can't even make rational decisions. Do not be terrified. You know, for example, I don't understand why we don't secure our borders. I, I, that, that is beyond me. Hello? Now, I know some of you may have, may have come in here illegally, and, and God bless you, but, you know, we have laws in this land. I'm, I'm a naturalized citizen. I was born in Cuba, but I came here legally. My father came here before me, became a citizen, sent for us. I came in 62. When I got old enough, I joined the military and became a citizen. That's the law of the land. We got our borders wide open. And not only are uh, people from Latin America come in, but, you know, it's very easy for terrorists to come in here. 
you know, they're Middle Eastern people who look, look Spanish. All they have to do is take a little Spanish courses and learn how to speak the language, and they can sneak right in here and put a dirty bomb in one of our cities. I, to, to me, that doesn't make any sense. We're, we're giving, listen, we're giving money to our enemies. We're giving money to people who don't even like us. I'm talking about billions of dollars. And we don't secure our borders? That, that to me, is, is, is like insane. It makes absolutely no sense. But this is the, the people that we have in government today because they're confused. All right? And he, and he said that, that there will be confusion, and, and we're seeing that. And then he said, uh, verse 9 again, when you hear of wars, commotions, do not be terrified, for these things will come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation, king against kingdom, and there will be great earthquakes in various places. So don't be surprised, you know, if you wake up one morning and there's a major earthquake somewhere. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about major, 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 greater than what we've seen. Don't let that freak you out. Because Jesus said that would happen. Famines and pestilence, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. The Bible actually says that men's heart will fail them for fear of the things that are coming on this earth. Are you following me? You know, how, how, many, how, many, how many do you know that uh, NASA is pretty prophetic? They've made several movies of asteroids, you know, coming and hitting the earth. What do you think would happen to people if, if an asteroid came and crashed into the Atlantic Ocean and, 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 and created a great tsunami and wiped out a number of cities? Wiped out, you know, the places where you like to go to the beach? Just wiped them totally out and all the people with it. Don't you think that freaked people out? But see, if you, if you know what the Bible says, it's not going to freak you out. You already know that's going to happen. On top of that, if you're being led by the Spirit, you're not going to be there on that day that that happens. You're not, going to be, you're not going to be at the beach on that day. You might be over on the other side of the country visiting somebody or attending a conference if you're in tune with God. But see, if you're not in tune with God, you could be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now, if you're in Christ and you die, well, sudden death, sudden glory, glory to God. But still, you know, I don't want to go before my time. I got work to do. And so do you. All right, now, verse 12 through 19, he begins to talk about things that will happen during the tribulation period. Verse 20 uh, through 24, he talks about the temple being destroyed and the Jews being dispersed. Go ver verse to 25. These are signs that will take place before he comes back. I'm almost finished. There will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. Now, I have a message called, as a matter of fact, you can go on YouTube and look it up. It's called The Four Blood Moons. I have it in English and Spanish. It's on YouTube. Pastor Barry put it on there for me. And, uh, and, 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 and it's a good message, and maybe one day I'll, I'll get to preach it here. There will be signs in the, in the sun and in the moon and the stars, and on the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. All of that we're seeing right now. Verse 26, men's hearts fail in them for fear. So fearful things are going to happen that will cause people to have heart attacks. It happened during 9-11. I heard the local news. People were having heart attacks. Now, they asked the cardiologist, is fear a major contributor to heart attacks? He said, yeah. Well, the Bible says God's not giving us a spirit of fear. 2 Timothy 1.7. But see, if you haven't been feeding on the Word of God and getting these scriptures inside of you and, then, and building your faith up and, 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 and developing that tenacity and that, that strength, you'll be affected just like the people in the world will. But, you know, you're not going to pray these things away, folks. These things are going to happen. There are certain things that we can pray away. There are certain things we're not going to pray away. And these, these things have to be fulfilled. Amen. They're in the Word. They have to be fulfilled. Now it says, um, men's hearts, verse 26, men's hearts fail them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draweth nigh. So again, the title of the message is what? Signs that point to Jesus soon return. Are these signs happening now in our lifetime? Yes. What did he say? Lift up your head, your redemption draweth nigh. That means that Jesus can come back any day. He can come back before the service is over. He can come back tomorrow. He can come back tonight. And the question is, are you ready? Because if you're not ready, you're going to be left behind. And you're going to go through the tribulation period. And, 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 and if you want to know about the tribulation period, read the book of Revelation. 
and, and, the, and the wrath of God that would be poured out upon this earth and the horrific things that will happen and the torture and the torment that people will suffer at the hand of the Antichrist. So you, you want to get out of here on the first load, on the catching away of the church. And in order to do that, you have to be ready. You have to watch. You have to be alert. You have to be about your father's business. In Matthew, the, Matthew 24, I didn't have to take, read it. In Matthew, in the, Matthew 25, there are things that he tells us to be doing, and maybe that's another message for another time, in order to be ready. But the first thing you've got to do is be born again. Or if you're a backslide, you've got to get right with God. It says, then they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your head because your redemption draweth near. Then he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they are all already budding, you see and know the, for yourself that summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will not pa pass away till all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Verse 34, take heed to yourselves and, to, and that your hearts, uh, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, that's partying, drunkenness, cares of this life, and that they come upon you unexpectedly. I want you to notice what, what affects your life. Partying. I'm talking about worldly partying. Uh, drunkenness. Um, the cares of this life. So you're still wrapped up with, with, with this life that the cares will bear, bear you, uh, burn you. And you won't be ready for that day. For it will come on as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of God. He tells you, you've got to watch, you've got to be spiritual life, and you've got to have a prayer life. So, you know, when Janita stands up here and talking about coming to prayer, you know, she's not doing it for her health. That's the Holy Ghost telling you, you need to come to prayer. And I tell you, one way to learn how to pray is get around people that know how to pray. Are you following?